Welcome back to the show, the eternal show. We're never gonna die. We're gonna live forever. It's a weekend again, and we got some snow in my part of the world. What about your part of the world? Do you have some snow? It's winter. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't like the snow. But maybe you have a little bit of snow, but it's above freezing, so it's gonna melt soon. Because that's what happens when the temperature is over freezing and ice melts in that way. Seventh heaven. Right, do you need smack? We did. We got a little bit of snow a little over a week ago on a Friday night. It was Ooh. muy coldo, and it was about 8 p.m., and it started <laughs> snowing, but it was big, Ooh. wet, giant. It was like the size of quarters, the snowflakes, but they were wet, and they landed. They accumulated very little, and then were gone within the hour. Within the hour. Was it? It snowed yesterday morning, got up to like 36 degrees, and it all melted. And we've got some residual snow from like a week or so ago yeah. that's just ice now, so that's taking longer to melt because it's ice. Because it, it melted and then got cold and froze. And right, 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 right. And then right. it snowed again today, but again, it's above a little bit above freezing now, so it's melting. It's melting. Malk your Gabor. Melting. Welcome. Everyone, one and all, to AAWY, the And Also With You podcast from Affable Idiots. Most weeks, join us and all your other lifelong friends as we laugh together. <laughs> <laughs> Share secrets. My toenails are getting a little too long. Oh, I just clipped my toenails last week. I need to do a little bit of a file on mine, get them Ooh. back down. Oh, you don't clip them? You file them? I like to them? file mine. I prefer to file. Oh, that sounds laborious. It, it it gives me. I feel like I get more control that way, though. Sure. And now sure. that I'm, now that I'm taking better care of my feet, and can I just tell you, my feet are so much better. Remember how I told you I yeah. was <laughs> using. Uh, I was Remember? using that one like. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. Go, go on. Ahead. Go on. <laughs> when my feet clapped because they were so gross. Well, they clapped, um, but also you yeah, you so would literally, like, they would click on the hardwood floor when you would hit your heels on the floor and go click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were so dry and calloused and awful and cracked and painful. And so I got this really strong, it's a really strong moisturizer and, like, a it exfoliates as well. There's some sort of a chemical in there that exfoliates. And then I pet egg pretty much every two days. Ooh, every two days. Not yeah. Ow. Oh, I'm sorry, not pet egg, pumice stone. Oh, I use gotcha. a pumice that's right, stone that's right, that's when right, I'm in right. the shower. Um, I don't have any cracks on my heels anymore. There's still a couple of like rough spots, probably just where I've built up. Uh, from you know, growing up in North Carolina, I just walked around barefoot all the time on like really hot asphalt and all this. I think in some ways my feet are just they're not rough though. It's like when you get you know, like when you play guitar and you get the calluses on your finger and it's just kind of right. like a it's kind of hard um i've got some of that but my feet are so much better and i'm now Proud i moisturize you. them thank you <laughs> i moisturize them every day and um i'm thinking i'm gonna like w w maybe every two months do the really strong one that's super super moisturizing and exfoliates it mm -hmm. uh oh my gosh it's so good my feet are just so much better so now I used to like clip my toenails down way low. Um, and I was like, I, my gender story is that <laughs> I, I like some things. I mean, female uh, is me, but um, you know, in some ways I'm like a tomboy. I don't know if tomboy is the right word. I'm like, you know, whatever. I'm not super femme, but uh, I've gotten to the point where I like my nails, my fingernails and my toenails to look nice. So instead of clipping them, because I, I, it's harder for me to get, like gauge how much I'm clipping and whatnot, and then I usually have to file anyway because like, you get like sharp bits. So I just file them down and make them really pretty and feel good about my feet. Finally, that's I guess that's a secret too. I feel good yep. about my feet. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the secret. That's the secret. The one <laughs> the, secret. The one secret. Make a vision board. Uh, Make a vision, make a vision board for your secret. Uh, so, in addition to learning secrets about each other, we also strengthen our friendships on this off-color Mister Rogers Esquire in utero show. <laughs> in utero. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Jesse Neal. That's me. 
Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> And with me here, I've got Chad, Michelle, Miguel, Ennis. Hola, Coca-Cola. That's Spanish for hello, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Coca-Cola. So it's the two of us and all you lifelong friends listening and watching across the world. We're global. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with all of you. And also with you, Neil. Neil, that's me. That's who I am. Mike. That's true. I'm going to start today by asking you a question, and I want and need you to answer this honestly. I will do my best to do my duty to God, my country, what? and obey the scout law to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. What does morally straight mean? Uh, I guess not morally curved. Not stealing. Not stealing. Not... Not morally ambiguous. They don't want you to commit crimes. They want That's you to have uh, morally straight. I've never heard. Um, I've never heard it put that way. I mean, I knew what it was when you said it. That's why I, I mean, asked. That is what the, it was. The Boy Scout. Um, it's not the law. Pledge? It's the oath. The Boy Scout oath. oath. Um, and at the time, you know, gay people weren't allowed, so maybe it was just like, I'm not going to be gay. Morally straight. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? What is the last? film you watched oh jesse the last film i watched so you know because we talked about this in december about our new year's resolutions one of mm -hmm. my new year's resolutions is to watch a movie i haven't seen once per week in 2021 so far i am on track with that nice last week i watched rocky for the first time the 1979 mm. film, I think it was. It was in the, sometime in the 70s. So I watched Rocky, and um, I liked the movie. I liked the movie. I got to tell you, there's a character in there named Rocky. <laughs> yeah. No. He happens to be the titular main character, uh, who reminds me a lot of Cam. Reminds me a lot of Cam. He is a very. Really? Have you seen Rocky at all? Not in the longest time. So he, is, he is a a nice way of putting this. He's a very simple person. A very simple person. You learn a lot about him from his environment that he lives in and works in and the people he surrounds himself with. He's a, a simple man. Um, he also, I just feel like some of, he just talks a lot, sometimes about nonsense and and it's just and he's just like nonstop talking yeah. and I was like I swear I've heard Cam say some of these things before. So he's a very simple person, but the whole the whole point of the movie is that like some elite boxer just picks a, a guy a name out of a hat basically, it's technically a name out of a book and says I want to fight this guy and this guy is basically a nobody living in Philadelphia and he finds out that he's going to be fighting for the title and so he works and works he's a nobody that just puts in enough hard work and dedication in order to prove himself and spoilers for rocky for 40 years ago he comes out successful yeah i mean so, otherwise why make the movie right right <laughs> <laughs> so i watched it for the first time and it was interesting to see it was nice to see it was a good movie i enjoyed the movie but it was also like I didn't, I didn't love the movie. It's on AFI's top hundred films of all time. It's a great underdog story. It's it's good. It's aspirational for people to be like, you know, I can I can it's overcome anything with enough hard work. It's got Eye of the Tiger. Yep. But there is a <laughs> scene in everything. this movie, Jesse. There is a scene in this movie that is straight up rape. It is a rape scene where Rocky rapes adrian and it was it was one of the most uncomfortable scenes for me to watch but it's not the thing is it's 1979 so this movie is just like oh this is a romance scene in 1990 1979 but in 2021 it's a rape scene um God. because he they go on their very first date this woman is incredibly shy they go on their very first date he's obviously jacked and ripped as shit he's a boxer he's won a lot of fights and at the end of this date, they end up on his front stoop outside of his apartment. And he invites her up. Or he's like, oh, come upstairs with me. And he opens the door and she goes like, I, I, sh I need to go home. 
And he says, oh, no, come on. I'm, you can trust me. Uh, come upstairs with me. She's like, I need to go home. Tells him repeatedly, I need to go home. I don't, I don't fit in. I don't belong here. I should go home. And he says, no. And he walks inside, and all you see is his hand opening the door. And he's just like basically not giving her an option. And, you know, she's this – she's a very incredibly timid, shy girl in her late 20s. And she she's out on a date with this guy who's used to beating people for a living – and so, of course, she doesn't have a choice. She walks up to his apartment. They're in his apartment. He then, you know, cracks open a beer. His apartment is disgusting. It is filthy. Um, yeah. the, there he is, like, on the back of his couch. He just has empty beer bottles lined up on the back of it, like, on the couch. Not on a shelf above displaying them like we all did in college, but just, like, laying on the back of his couch. And she's clearly Speak uncomfortable. Speak for yourself about displaying beer cans, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, I never did. But everyone else in college did. Yeah, or their liquor bottles or, yep. or both. Yep. Uh, but she's standing in the middle of the room, fully clothed, her coat on, her hat on. She's clearly, she's just standing still, completely still, uncomfortable. Again, he's like, come over here, sit, sit on the couch with me. Sit on the couch with me. And she's like, no, I don't belong here. I don't feel comfortable. Repeatedly telling him, no, I don't want to. And then she's like, I think I, I'm going to go home. And she goes for the door. She opens the door. He comes up behind her, slams the door closed, corners her. And then he says, I want to kiss you right now. And he takes off her hat. He slowly removes her hat. And she's clearly uncomfortable. But he takes off her hat. And he says, I want to kiss you right now. You don't have to kiss me back. But I want to kiss you. And then he proceeds to kiss her. And then she finally breaks down. And they make out on the ground. And they have sex. That is a non-consensual. She said no 55 times in that scene. But yeah. of course, in 1979, it was like, oh, my God. That's the scene they fell in love. And they have a wonderful relationship the rest of the time. She supports him and all this kind of stuff. And but that's that's how love started in the seventies. Started with rape. Gross. So it made me incredibly uncomfortable to watch it nowadays. Yeah. Um, but other Super than that, the movie was great. <laughs> and then still root for that character. Yeah. Ugh. Woof. So that's the that's, mo- that's the most recent movie I watched. I I'm probably sometime over the year going to watch the entire Rocky series. But I'm really just excited to finally watch Creed because I've heard really great things about Creed with Michael B. Jordan. He's directing Is that Creed a Rocky three. Rocky movie. Yeah. So in Rocky one, Rocky fights Apollo Creed, and wins. Mm. And then I always thought that was a vi- uh, video game character. I guess I haven't seen <laughs> I all mean, of Rocky. I think I've only seen Creed. some of it. Uh, Maybe that's what game, I was yeah. thinking. But Creed is, I think it's Apollo Creed's son or nephew, and then Rocky is training him. I don't. I don't. Obviously, I haven't seen the movie, but. Um, yeah, I've heard great things about it. So that's it. Awesome. That's, the, that's the most recent film I watched. Last night, can I tell you about mine? Yes, please. Yes, please. Well, you and I had talked about watching this after we watched The Lobster. Mm. Um, but I finally Did you watched watch Dogtooth. Uh, yeah. Yes. I finally watched I haven't Dogtooth. Seen it, yet, though. it is. It was really good. It's super weird and very uncomfortable. There are some very uncomfortable scenes. And the movie is really good because it's like, you know, it's absurdist in classic Yorgos Lanthimos fashion. Mm-hmm. But um, also, it's just like horrifying. They There are just like moments that are just horrifying. And it's like, like at least four times in the movie we were watching and I went, <gasps> <You know? laughs> but... Oh, it was really good. I really liked it. It's in Greek, so you need to subtitle it okay. um, or watch it's been it on dubbed, my up which next is for literally years. Ever since we saw The Lobster, which is one of my favorite movies. It's yeah, I saw, that movie is so good. I sh- that was one of the. I think I don't remember when I showed that movie to Casey, but I was like, we have to. You have to watch The Lobster. It's such a good movie. And his parents just watched it actually and told him they're like you guys should watch the lobster we just watched it it's a great movie <laughs> and um so we we watched uh blah, blah, blah. we watched dog tooth last night it's it's insane it's it's wild and this is the movie where you know you might recall where the dad the parents teach the kids the wrong words for things mm-hmm. which is also that's just hilarious there's some of it and it's like what? Why does he, why is he even doing this? And what, what I love about a classic Yorgos Lanthimos, all of the crazy shit that happens, none of it gets explained. You know, that's just which the I, world that I they're love. in. Yeah, it's just the world. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so I highly recommend it. 
highly recommend it. Maybe uh, I'll make I know that you'd this like week. It. I was gonna King of Staten Island just came on HBO Max, so I was gonna make that my movie this week. But maybe I'll do Dog Tooth instead. Dog Tooth is so good. You can do two movies in a week if you want, if you You're have right. time. It doesn't count as two separate weeks, but I can. I can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're probably watching movies anyway, right? At some more than once a week, or do you only that's, watch? That's that's part of my problem during the pandemic is that I, I, I used to watch like two or three movies a week, mostly mm-hmm. in theaters before the pandemic. But once the pandemic hit, I watched like a movie a month, if that. It's yeah. weird because, like, I find I can watch several hour long episodes of a TV show back to back and be fine with that. Yeah. But if I think oh, two hours, two and a half hours, that is a lot of time to commit to watching a movie. Yeah. Even though I can commit three hours to watching three episodes of Lost and be totally fine. But. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, that, so part oh, of my man. New Year's resolution is making sure that I actually am watching movies again. Yeah. Oh, you got to watch Dogtooth. It's great. It's it's really good, and it's I mean it's gonna it's a, it's it's a thriller for sure because of the way that because of some of the things that happen. It's just it's just insane. It's just ridiculous. I think you'll love it. You'll love it, especially if you liked the lobster and mm-hmm. you liked the killing of a sacred deer. Right? I haven't seen that yet. I liked it not as much as the lobster for sure, but I I did enjoy that movie. Again, another like absurdist crazy movie. That he wrote. Yeah. That was his second English language movie, right? Or was The Killing of a Sacred Deer his first? Lobster was first. And then Killing of a Sacred Deer. And then The Killing of a Sacred Deer. It's good. So now I want to watch all the rest of his stuff. But he directed The Favorite, which I, which was a great movie, but he didn't write that. That's the period piece with um, the two what's or butts that I can't remember their names right now. Yes. Uh, the the Col- K- Col- Coleman, somebody Coleman, played Gary? the queen. Gary Coleman. <laughs> Gary Coleman. I think her last name's Col- She won the Oscar, didn't she? I think that so, year. yeah. Um, she was also on uh, Broadchurch, which is a good TV show f- f- based in the UK. Not um, yeah, and it was her, and then it was the the girl from The Mummy. <laughs> that's that's the one I'm thinking of. I can't, I can't remember her name right now. Anox and a moon. Yes. Anox, anox and a moon. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was a, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And so I want to watch all his other stuff, but it's it's not streaming anywhere. You have to, like, buy it or rent it. So I'll just have to see. I'll yeah. figure it out. Ah. All right. Now, what say we get into the meat of this episode? Let's do it. And have a little bit of a healthy competition. <laughs> this week's game, or so last week, let me pull this back up. Last week, we played the great game, are Leonardo DiCaprio movies good? <laughs> and we learned that they are good, but that we rate them a little bit better than the Rotten Tomatoes critics do. Correct. Which is probably to be expected in most cases, because we're not as critical as the critics. Not right? as critical critical I'm gonna get critical critical that was fun (laughs) (laughs) so this week we're playing a game that I like to call plot plot fizz fizz cameo what a relief it is (laughs) (laughs) okay I see what you did there the title has nothing to do with the game except for the cameo part (laughs) (laughs) okay okay so what we've what I've done, or Casey put this all together, so he gets the credit. But uh, what we have here is it's we've got six rounds. Each round, except for the last round, has three people in it. The last round has four. So two of these people, or three pe- of the people, if you were to the last round, are on cameo. One of them is not. Okay. So you've got to tell me which one isn't. And then after that, you have to tell me, of the two that are on Cameo, which one charges more? Okay. And if you want a bonus point, you can guess what you think the amount that they charge is, but you don't have to. Okay. But you, so you can... Is the, do are those two separate steps? Do I guess which one's not on Cameo? You tell me if that's correct or not correct. And then I guess which one charges more? Okay. 
Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want, if you want to guess, I mean, it's not going to hurt you if you if you guess and you get it wrong. That's just a if you want an extra bonus point, you can get up to three points per round. Okay. Okay. All right. So the first round, it's. It's listed as the singers, in quotation marks. Okay, okay. Oh, I I hit my microphone. Sorry if you heard that. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, person number one. William Hung of American Idol fame. She bang, she bang. Oh, baby, when she move, she move. Yep, okay. (laughs) That was him. Mark McGrath, the Sugar Ray front man. Gotcha, okay. And Gavin Rossdale, the Bush front man. But glycerine, that guy? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so I have to tell you which one's not on Cameo. Yep. I feel like William Hung probably, when I think of Cameo, it's probably like you want people to laugh at the message and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you got so and so to say this to me. So I'm going to say William Hung is definitely on Cameo. And then it comes down to Sugar Ray and Bush. I'm going to say the guy from Sugar Ray is probably more desperate for money. What's his name? Mark McGrath. (laughs) Mark McGrath. I'm going to say he's on Cameo because he's probably a little more desperate for money and nothing's, nothing's coming in from the bank from his old music. Whereas the guy from Bush, I feel like, was a little bit more successful maybe. So he's not on Cameo. That's my guess. You get a point. That's exactly <gasps> right. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now which one charges more, William Hung or Sugar Ray Guy? Knowing uh, my, so my, I have two reference points for Cameo. I know that Kevin from The Office was the highest paid person on Cameo last year. That's amazing. And it, I think it was something like $1.2 million from cameo and then i know that the todd from scrubs charges a couple hundred dollars for every minute long video and those are both not like main characters or a-list actors or incredibly famous people even though the office was also the most streamed show last year Yes, it was. so i'm going to say that William Hung charges more money than Sugar Ray Guy. And I'm going to say William Hung charges $170 per video. And the other guy charges 80 You are incorrect. Oh, bubbles. You are close. You are actually really close about what Mark McGrath charges. So okay. Mark McGrath does charge more. He charges 90 So you're oh, only okay. $10 off there. Yeah. But William Hung, you can get a video from William Hung for a mere $30. No way. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, that is great for him showing up Kinda on one. Kind of makes me wonder why I haven't been having hundreds of videos from him. Yeah. he's He's got... I thought I had friends. He's on American Idol for a good... <laughs> Four minutes, 30 years ago. <laughs> well, like 20 years ago. And he's able to now, because of that, charge 30 bucks a video. That's good for him. Good for him. Ride he that even wave. Had, didn't he had an he album. even have, he had an album, but wasn't he like a special, like musical guest on a, an episode oh, probably, of American Idol? Probably. Like a season finale or something. All of those incredibly talented people out there, and they chose to bring him back because it made for better t- TV. TV. I know, right? Oh, man. Bless him. All right. So you got one point out of that, out of a possible three, which is, hey, that's good, though. That's That's good. At least you didn't. I mean, some of these I fully fucked up when Casey was giving me the test. So, (laughs) okay. Round two. This is the reality TV section. Ooh, okay. We've got Paul Hollywood, the host of the Great British Baking Show. Okay. We've got Carol, that, that bitch, Carol Baskin <laughs> from Tiger King. And we've got Nicole Snooky Polizzi from Jersey Shore. Okay. First of all, Carol Baskins is absolutely taking every advantage of, of any kind of celebrity she can right now. Dancing with the Stars, being in Wonder Woman 84. She is taking advantage of it. Was she in that? Yeah, she was the villain, Cheetah. 
Kristen Wiig started out as that character, and then she morphed into Carol Baskins to become Cheetah. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect, perfect. (laughs) So Carol Baskins is definitely on Cameo. Um, And then we got Great British Bake Off and... What was the other one again? Snooky. And Snooky. Okay, Snooky. Snooky's all into social media. But I feel like she would get so many requests that she's like, I don't have time for this. I have to do whatever alcohol I'm promoting right now. So I'm going to say Snooky doesn't have time for Cameo, but Great British Bake Off guy does. Final answer. That's incorrect, but that is what I guessed. I had guessed that same thing, but Paul Hollywood is not on Cameo. I don't think they. I don't think they understand the internet over there in Great Britain. That's what I should have. God damn it! (laughs) They haven't gotten the internet yet. Americans know exactly how to take care of the internet and try anything, but working for a living. But Britain, they don't. No, they they actually work. (laughs) It sucks. Okay, so we've got Carol Baskin, that bitch, Carol Baskin, <laughs> and Snooky. Who do you think charges more, or do you, or do you want to guess what you think they okay, they so charge? Carol Baskin after that? and Snooky. Snooky, four hundred dollars a video. Carol Baskin, one hundred and eighty-five. Ah, uh, you got so you you were right that Snooky charges more. Yep, that's correct. Um, Snooky charges three hundred. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And Carol Baskin charges two ninety nine. Oh man, one dollar <laughs> difference. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. Oh, that's good. So you, you still get a point. That's hot. That's hot. Who was it they used to say? That's hot. That oh, that's Paris that Hilton. Hilton girl. She tried to trademark. That's it. hot. In fact, I think she successfully trademarked it. I think she. Oh, did she? Yep. Nice. That's beautiful. Good for her. Good for her. Good for her. So round three. These are the YouTube in quote stars okay okay we've got tay zande or tay zande chocolate rain oh, chocolate rain chocolate fame. rain <laughs> <laughs> we've got ed bassmaster the would you look at that just oh, look, look at, at that? it you know what i said to that line? i said hold on, hold on. I was just look at it just look at that <laughs> okay and we've got Daniel Lara of Damn Daniel. Damn Daniel. Okay. Back at it again. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so one of those. Okay. I feel. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So Chocolate Rain. Look at that. Damn Daniel. I feel like Chocolate Rain is. He's a little more shy. He's probably like uh, he's he's done an episode of Tosh Point oh before. That he. His character was in South Park at one time, and I'm unsure of whether or not he voiced that character. But I feel like he's more shy and reserved and probably not looking for the celebrity, so I'm going to guess that he is not on Cameo, but the other two are. Final answer. Final answer? Yep. That is incorrect. Buttholes! I know. I think that was what I guessed. It was either that or Ed Bassmaster. So, Tayson Day... And Ed Bassmaster are on Cameo. Okay. Damn Daniel is not. Damn Daniel. I know, right? Damn Daniel. You know what it probably is? Damn Daniel's probably too young and doesn't really understand that he could be making a lot of money out there. He's probably a millennial out there struggling for no reason when he could just be sending videos to people for 100 bucks a pop. Idiot. I get it again! Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, now who do you think charges more? Okay, so Tayson Day, sorry, Chocolate Rain, or look at that. Chocolate Rain, I feel like, is so much more popular and more of a household. Like, that was the beginning of internet, of the internet. There was Keyboard Cat, Chocolate there was Chocolate Rain, Rain there was, th- 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 there he was, was one of the one first video internet from OK Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I feel like it was the tread, like the treadmill OK Go song. Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to say Tayzonde charges more than Look at That Guy. And I'm going to say Tayzonde charges 125 and Look at That charges 45. You're not too far off with the Look at That. Tayzonde, Chocolate Rain, 
He charges forty dollars. Okay. For video. I know. Pretty reasonable. Absolutely. And the would you look at that guy? You can get a video from him for less than a video for, uh, from William Hung at twenty five dollars. Wow. Yeah. I don't care who you are. That's 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 a steal. <laughs> That's a deal. <laughs> you, I'd, say I'd say that's, that's a, a buy. buy. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Okay, round three, four, round four. Hold on, you got one point there. Let me let me wrote that down so I don't forget. Let me wrote that down. Round. F- let me wrote it down. So I might should wrote that down. <laughs> might shoulda wrote it down after after I ate. After I eat it. After I et. <laughs> After I et. <sighs> okay, round four is the canceled. Ooh, okay. Ted Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of politicians. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mel. Uh, he's not on this list, but he's definitely canceled. Yeah. So we've got Stephen Collins. The father from Seventh Heaven. Oh. And the father of Dee and Dennis. But then yep. he got canceled. Yeah, he got canceled for diddling kids. Yeah, right? <laughs> Chevy Chase. Ooh, yeah. From many different fames. Big racist. Big racist. And Victoria Jackson. She was on SNL. Uh, you would recognize her if you Googled her face or Googled her name. She was on 7th, uh, not on 7th Heaven. She was on SNL. She left. She became a really big, like, conservative something or other, and she's, like, said a lot of anti-Islamic stuff. Victoria Jackson is her name? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't recognize her. She looks a lot you don't like recognize my her? friend Mandy from Cupid, though. Not Mandy. Uh, Jill. Like my friend Jill. Yeah, she was. Didn't she have like a high pitched or like a weird voice? I feel like she had a weird voice. We can update but Victoria Jackson's um... depression dance. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, but she's a big old racist now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. she is. Oh yep. Oh sorry, I just googled her and um, her tweets came up. She says, "Rejoice, CNN canceled." I don't think CNN's canceled. Okay. Okay. Pretty sure. So, of those three, who do you think is not on Cameo? Okay, let me let me recap again. So we got Victoria Jackson, SNL, big old racist, CNN canceled, mm-hmm. whatever. Chevy Chase, big old racist. Um, who was the first one? Stephen Collins is his name. Seventh Heaven Dad. Stephen Collins, Seventh Heaven Dad. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, SNL girl definitely on Cameo trying to be slimy and get as much publicity out there as she can and make money off of it. Um, Chevy Chase. This is where... So it comes down to Chevy Chase and Seventh Heaven Dad. Seventh Heaven Dad, had he not been on Sunny in Philadelphia in a comedic role... Well, he wasn't in a comedic role, but like he was, he's open to comedy and having fun. Yeah. I would have guessed that he would not be on it. But his role in, in Sunny in Philadelphia makes me think that maybe he is... Chevy Chase strikes me as one of those people who is so backwards and old that he's he's like um, who was it recently that I found oh he's like Christopher Walken probably where Christopher Walken literally has never made a phone call or sent an email or used a cell phone what? Um, yeah yeah I was found an interview with him how and does Stephen he find Colbert. out that he's been hired for roles so he doesn't uh, maybe no maybe he's never used it he's never owned a cell phone and he's never he's never dialed a phone call and he's never sent an email um and he he was doing an interview with Stephen Colbert and he says whenever he's on film sets they give him a phone to in order to be able to find him and get in touch with him but he said that he's never dialed a phone so i assume he has an assistant that he just gives the phone to and says hey call so and so and like that's, that's some disgusting bullshit. to me that's disgusting and the fact that he's never sent an email yeah. that's disgusting to me join us and don't be an asshole, a selfish asshole who doesn't want to use technology and makes everyone else do your shit for you. Anyway. Because that's so, what he's doing. He's having emails sent on his behalf. Right, exactly. Because he's too good to learn how to use it. Um, Fuck that. So, that's, sorry, that's Christopher Walken. I assume Chevy Chase comes kind of from that same era. So, that's my assumption is that he's just against using technology, definitely filming videos for people that aren't racist rants. So, I'm going to say Chevy Chase is not on Cameo. 
Ooh. Final incorrect. answer. Incorrect. <gasps> no, damn it. It's the seventh heaven dad. He's not on uh, cameo. I know. It's it. okay. It's okay. Damn Daniel. <laughs> damn Daniel. <laughs> so we've got Chevy Chase and Victoria Jackson. Okay. Who okay. do you think charges more? Chevy Chase, Victoria Jackson. I think Chevy Chase definitely charges more. He's a household name. Everyone knows the vacation movies. Um, mm -hmm. And I, as a person who has watched a lot of SNL in my life, had no idea who Victoria Jackson was. So yeah. I'm going to say Chevy Chase charges more. I'm going to say he charges $250 a video. Victoria What's Her Butt charges $54, $55. 55 All right. So you're definitely right. Chevy Chase does charge more. Okay. You were you you, you were half off what Chevy Chase charges. Like if you oh. took what he charges and cut it in half, <gasps> you were right. Really? <laughs> he charges $500. Whoa. Holy crap. Yeah, that sounds like Chevy Chase though, right? To charge yeah. $500? Definitely. That sounds right. Like if he's going to be on it, he's going to really like make you pay for it. Right. Boomers. Uh, Victoria Jackson charges one twenty-five, which is more oh, than I would have expected. Good for her. Good for her for knowing her <laughs> yeah, worth. Using I guess. her racism uh, yeah. <laughs> to make money. Yes. <laughs> All right, round five. This is the tertiary sitcom characters round. Ooh, good. Not the primary, <laughs> not the secondary, but the tertiary. <laughs> the tertiary. So we've got. Kyle Davis, who played Lil Kev, the rapper, and Dee's boyfriend from It's Always Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the one they thought was mentally challenged. Yep. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> we've got we've got Michael Schur, I think is how that's pronounced, who plays who played Moe's Schrute, cousin of White <laughs> from The Office. Okay. Also, and the one who they think is mentally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then we've got Allison Becker, who played Shauna Malwee Tweep. Malwee Tweep? Shauna Malwee Tweep? Reporter from Parks and Rec. Okay. Um, all right. So, Mose is, I believe he's one of the producers on the show. Or he's a writer. He has he's like got a role on the production team for sure. Moe's so what I feel a like character. He's, <laughs> he's in that he's in that world. He's probably he's probably on cameo. Uh, Lil Kev, I don't think I know anything that he's ever done aside from that one episode of Sunny in Philadelphia. And then Shauna Malwe Tweep is very attractive, so you know she's on cameo and she was she was on a lot of Parks and Rec. So she's definitely on Cameo. I'm going to say Lil Kev is not on Cameo. Wait. Not on Cameo. Wait, wait, wait. Because I also feel like he would be for the deep cut people who, like, he's on there. He only does a video once or twice a year, but it's for people who, like, oh, my God, me and my best friend are real Sunny Philadelphia fans. I'm going to send him this video, and he's going to know exactly who this is. Damn it. Damn Daniel. Damn Daniel. Um, Lil Kev, Moe's, Shauna Mawaj. Okay, Moe's does not have a cameo. That's my final answer. Final answer. Final answer. You're right. Oh, you saved yourself. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought, I thought Moe's had one because it's like Moe's was such a, I don't know, he was such a weird character. Like, you gotta think Moe's has one, but no, nope, he's not on there. So we've got Lil Kev. And Shauna Mal Malwe Tweep? Malwe Tweep. <laughs> Malwe Tweep. <laughs> Who do you think charges more? I think Shauna Malwe Tweep charges more. Um, and I think that Lil Kev charges $20. Shauna Malwe Tweep charges 60 You were incorrect. <gasps> Lil Kev charges more. What? Yeah, he charges $48. $48. <laughs> and Allison Becker or Shauna Malway Tweep charges $38. They're, so they're very oh similar. Oh my God. What is Lil Kev's name? Kyle Davis. Kyle Davis. I'm going to see if he's been in anything else that I just haven't watched. In? 
Kyle Oh, my Davis. God. He actually cleans up and is like a presentable human. Okay, he was Little in Friday Ken. the 13th, Into the Storm, Catch Me If You Can, The Hitcher. Okay, he's been in some stuff. He's got 50 credits okay. as an actor. Hmm. All right. Yeah, just a, uh, okay. Just hadn't American seen. American Horror Story. He played a guy named Dallas in Afterbirth, Rubber Man, Piggy Piggy, and Home Invasion. Piggy Piggy. <laughs> Piggy Piggy. Kyle Davis. He also played... In three episodes of Dexter, a man named Steve Dorsey. He was in Bones as Wheelie Pete Casriel in The Daredevil in the Mold. Wheelie. I used to love that show. I love that show so much. That Bones dance. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my oh, God. Oh, the Bones dance. Oh, yeah. He's definitely been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Right on. Good his, for him. His credit in Catch Me If You Can is named Kid. <laughs> He's just Kid. Kid. He was a, ch- a mere child. You know what's funny, oh, though? man. What? I don't see Sonny in Philadelphia on here. Really? Oh, no. There it is. There it is. Oh, that's right. He, played, he was in two episodes. He was... Sweet D's dating a retarded person, and D gives birth. That's right. Because that's when they brought back all of her ex-boyfriends to figure out who was the dad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lil' Kev. Who ended up being the dad? I forget. I don't remember. I don't either. I totally don't remember. All right. Who was Are you Sweet D's baby dad D? Google has a very confident Carmen. Max transgender ex-lover Carmen is the father of Dee's baby. She's now in a relationship with another man who is unable to have children. So Dee acted as a surrogate for the pair. Oh, I forgot about that. I did too. I totally forgot about that. But then still claimed him on her taxes, right? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) What a good show. Okay, we've got one more round. This, okay, so this round has four people. One of these people is not on Cameo. Okay. And this round is called Real Deal Famous. Ooh. Like, they're like, you know, people that you would think of as actually, like, famous people. Okay. So, we've got Floyd Mayweather, champion boxer. Right, okay. We've got Lady Gaga, a.k.a. Lady Gaga. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. We've got Caitlyn Jenner, transgender icon. Okay. And we've got Dennis Rodman, NBA legend and North Korean emissary. I was going to say, yeah, best friend Who? of Kim Jong-il. Or Un. <laughs> yeah, right. Kim Jong-il, Un. Un. Yeah. Un. Yeah, Il whatever. is dead. Un is alive, I think. I think that's how it's working. <laughs> so okay, who so Dennis Rodman, is not on there? Dennis Rodman, Kylie Jenner. No. Caitlyn. Caitlyn Jenner. Um... And, Gaga. And what they, Lady, Lady Gaga. And Floyd Mayweather. Again? Floyd Mayweather. Okay. So one of those is not on Cameo. Let's go through process of elimination. Dennis Rodman is old. He can no longer play basketball, but he still needs to profit off of that. He's going to be on Cameo. Um, actually, I don't, I don't think he plays basketball anymore. He's old. He's old. Uh, yeah, he's, I, I also think don't he's retired from the NBA. Um, let's see. We have Floyd Mayweather. He's relatively young, I think. I also don't follow boxing or MMA or anything like that, but I believe he's maybe like our age-ish. And... Ish? I don't know how old he is, actually, but he's like somewhere around there. How old is Floyd Mayweather? Click. I mean, he had a boxing match not long ago. Shit, he's 43 years old. Okay. Okay. Casey's age, plus a few years. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's also our age plus a few more years <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> if that's how you everyone is our age plus or minus some years plus or minus a couple of years <laughs> um okay so he's old i feel like he's in that that age group where maybe they're against 
like they they missed the technology gap maybe so he's on he's a maybe that he doesn't have cameo and then we have i've already gaga. forgotten who are the other one gaga obviously she, she's jenner. Uh, okay gaga and caitlin jenner Caitlyn Jenner, I feel like, is going to be out there because they are trying to spread the word on transgender and and make themselves seen and understood. So I feel like they're going to be on. Plus she's going to be on cameo. So and plus, right, a Jenner. And then we got Gaga, and Gaga, I feel like, is one of those people who is just like way too famous. She is a gay icon, and if she were on cameo, it would be nonstop videos. So I'm going to say Gaga is the one not on. Cameo. Cameo. Final answer. You are correct. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, that okay, is okay. Correct. Yep. Now you don't have to say um, who you think. Well, I would like you to say how, like, who you think makes the mo- charges the okay, most. I don't second, have to do one, least. two, three, but at least I just have to know who does the most, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that means it's Rodman Jenner. And Mayweather. I'm going to say Dennis Rodman overestimates his worth and he charges the most. Final answer. Final answer? Yep. Incorrect. <gasps> okay, 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 okay. okay. Actually... Let, me, let me try to guess the, try the, money, the monies real quick. Okay. I'm going to guess Dennis Rodman charges $120. I'm going to guess... Jenner charges, she charges 220 and Floyd Mayweather charges 250 Final answer. Wrong again. Oh, no. Okay. What is it? So, Caitlyn Jenner charges the most at a whopping 2500 Holy banolo. Yep. And then we've got Floyd Mayweather charging 999. Okay. And Dennis Rodman coming in with a cool 500. Okay. Okay. Damn, Daniel. Damn, Daniel. So you got 1 point each round, which is good. I mean, it's harder to guess so, you know, some both of them. Both of right, them. Right, 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 right. So and you the, got 6. And the money's those were bonus points anyway, so yeah, so yeah, really yeah. it would have been, you know, you got 50%, really. All right. And that's good. When it comes to this, it's good. I give that a passing grade. I'd say that's a bye. A bye. <laughs> <laughs> Very a good, bye. us. bye. I'm so proud. So now, let's move on. Last week, we discussed some 16 stupid questions. Just really dumb questions. Um, because that's what the internet suggested as topics of conversation. So true. that's what we did. <laughs> and this week, why don't you tell us what we're going to chat about? So Jesse, this week is something that I've I've been thinking about for a couple of weeks now, since I first kind of understood the argument. And it's something where I don't know where I stand. It's not a conversation that I think we are going to fix or come to an agreement on or solve during this episode. But I think that it's important to raise the issue and at least talk about it. Um, and that is the the issue of, is it okay for straight people to play LGBTQ plus characters in film and television? I'm going to give, I actually have a, a lot of research. This all came from a an article that I read, came out on January 5th from NBCNews.com called, Should Straight Actors Still Play Gay Characters? It's Complicated. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of little background pieces on why this discussion is important. I think this is my personal opinion about why this discussion is important. And then I want to pull out a couple of points from the article. And then I just want us to talk about it as whether, whether you think it's something that, whether they should be still allowed to play gay characters. So the little bit of a background that I wanted to, to pull in here is the fact that representation in media matters. Um, but not only in media, it also matters in all facets of life. And I'm going to start somewhere that sounds like it's not quite related, but it is. So I want to start with a conversation 
around the first a question that I that uh, came up during a work meeting. Sometimes we just have you know, like intro questions to our meetings just to like break the ice and things like that. And one of them was my manager asked everyone on the team, "What was the first grade you remember having a teacher who wasn't white?" Mm. And that was an interesting question to hear everyone talk about because yeah. the majority of people were it said college. And our team is, we are mostly white people on, on our specific team of, of 11 people now. Um, but it was still interesting that like every, almost everyone, the, the answer was college. For me personally, it was third grade with Miss Gassaway. But he said that he, he read an article about that. And, and so he started to ask people more and more yeah. and finds out that not only are people not having black teachers in grade school, but they're not sometimes college is the first time, if ever they get exposed to having a person of color, whether it's black, Indian American, uh, any person of color teaching them. Yeah. And the reason this was brought up is because it's, it's problematic because then these icons in our education system that we are seeing as smart, intelligent people capable of teaching the world. And we don't associate that with people of color. And so that's, uh, a really awful um, just like thing that happens to be an issue in our country is that in America, we don't really have a lot of teachers who are people of color or at least exposing kids to them at an early age. So that is, is a little bit about like why representation matters in our, in our lives. But then if we look at why representation map matters in media that we're consuming, um, I want to look at blackface real quick. Blackface was something that uh, originated in minstrel shows uh, a long time ago in the 1800s and continued for far too long into the 1900s. Uh, and it was really white people playing black people in theater and then eventually film. Yeah. But it's not really just that. It's not really just, oh, I'm a white person. We need a black character. Let me just put some shoe polish on my face and pretend I'm black. It was really the white media controlling the way that we perceived black people in America. Yeah. So it, it was problematic for two reasons. One of them was if it's a black role, that's an opportunity for a black actor. Why are we taking that away from them? But the second one and kind of more dangerous one was we controlled as white people, the way that black people were represented. So in that same vein of people not being exposed to black educators, Lots of times, like my dad was one of these people that he didn't even see it. He never met a black person until college. Um, wow. So all he knew was what he saw on television growing up. And when people who are not black or people who are not any other race are portraying them, it's not an accurate, it's not a, a faithful representation of their people and their culture. And so Jim Crow laws were actually created based off of a character, like they're named that because of a character in minstrel shows from the 1800s and um it's it's really how it's how the south and and um i want to say the government but i feel like that's it's not false but it's how white supremacists and and the country controlled people's thoughts about black people is through blackface and jim crow and all of that so that matters people authentically playing people of color matters for those reasons. That's the background that I want to use to set this up. Let's jump into the, a little bit of the article. So the article uh, starts by talking about a movie that came out on Netflix in December called Prom. Have you heard of this? Yes, I saw it. You did see it. Perfect. I saw like the first half hour of it. I liked what I saw. I never ended up finishing it. But the argument is that there was a lot of backlash against this movie because James Corden plays the main character. It's a, uh, it's a musical um, about a bunch of Broadway actors. And James Corden plays a gay man in the movie. And in fact, in the movie, he's referred to as someone who is gay as a bucket of wigs. And yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually didn't know this ahead of time. I, I assumed James Corden was gay. I didn't even know it was an issue. And then people brought up, like, oh, he's a straight man playing a gay character. We need authentic representation in media. There are plenty of gay Broadway people out there who could play and plenty of gay actors out there who could play this role. Why did it go to James Corden? Uh, and I was like, oh, I hadn't ever thought about that before. Obviously, 
blackface we know is not okay, but uh, I can't remember whether it was in this or whether it was in tweets or whatever I was reading, uh, doing some research about it. They called it gay face. And I was like, oh, I had never thought about that as yeah. as taking roles from gay people or representing them in an inauthentic way. So this article, I'm just going to pull a couple of things from it that I think are interesting talking points, and then I want us to have this discussion. The article goes into a lot of interviews with people uh, and quotes from people, but the argument itself essentially is that people who are straight can never really authentically understand and represent gay people uh, and the struggles that they go through and the lives that they live, and that those should be going to gay actors or people who are out. Um, it also kind of represent it, it separates gay and lesbian from trans, trans being its own kind of beast mm -hmm. to tackle. Uh, history, there's a history in movies and television for people being celebrated, straight people being celebrated. Obviously, there are Tom Hanks won an Oscar for Philadelphia for playing a gay man with AIDS, Jared Leto and Di Dallas Buyers Club for playing a trans woman, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, Brokeback Mountain, Eddie Redmayne for the trans woman and the Danish girl. And then Jeffrey Tambor actually, so he's played a trans woman in the show Transparent, and there's a lot of other controversy around that. But in his 2016 Emmy acceptance speech, he said, I would not be unhappy were I the last cisgender male to play a transgender character on television. Yeah. Um, so we have this history of celebrating straight people playing these in a really, uh, what we perceive as an authentic, amazing role. There's a person named Jesse James Keitel who... Oh, they're a non-binary actor who plays a trans-feminine non-binary character on ABC's Big Sky. And they said, I've only played queer roles in my professional career, and I'm looking forward to the day when I can play a role that has nothing to do with my gender or sexuality, or my character's gender or sexuality. I think that's a privilege that many straight and cis actors don't realize is even a thing. So what Jesse's bringing up is like, the characters on television, if they are trans or gay, like that is the identity of that character rather than just being a trait that that person has. So they're, we're in kind of a transition period where we're trying to shed more light on the gay experience and the trans experience in media, but at the cost of making that the only thing that's relevant about the character. So Jesse's saying, I'm, I'm really excited for a day when I just get to play a character who happens to be gay or trans. Yeah. Um, and speaking on the trans experience, there's another quote from filmmaker Sekia Dorset, uh, who says, the trans experience is beyond anything we can imagine. And that's what she said when trying to describe why she thinks transgender roles specifically should be reserved for trans actors. Because obviously that's not just like a, a, a sexual preference or something like that. It is like a struggle of you not identifying with what you were born as, which is obviously I get is a little bit of... of um, gay and lesbian uh, by, but it's taken to the next level with trans. Like you don't feel like you belong in your own body. Last couple things here. They're speaking on trans specifically. Only 20% of Americans report even knowing someone who is trans, meaning that most of their ideas about trans people are from what they see in the media. According to Morgan Townsend from GLAAD, who uh, is an ad, uh, GLAAD is an advocate for representation in media. So that kind of goes back to, you know, people who don't have black teachers and they don't know black people. They rely on what they see in the media, which at the time was Jim Crow stuff. And then finally, uh, I have a quote here from, oh, poop. I didn't capture the person who said it, but the quote says, I would never want to tell a story. Oh, this is Kristen Stewart who play, who is from Twilight uh, and a bunch of other things. She's actually a really great actress in some things as well. You don't have to watch in the Twilight movies. In some things, yeah. <laughs> but she said she identifies as, I think in the article she mentioned, she was bi, she was either bi or lesbian. But she says, this throws a, a wrench into it. She says, quote, I would never want to tell a story that really should be told by somebody who's lived that experience. Having said that, it's a slippery slope conversation because that means I could never play another straight character if I'm going to hold everyone to the letter of this particular law. I think it's such a gray area. So there's a lot of background on there, but I wanted to have the discussion of one, do we think it's important, which I think we kind of 
probably agree, but we'll talk about that. Do we think it's important? And then two, kind of going off of Kristen Stewart's thing there, like how do how do we hold people accountable to this? And do we hold it strict? Because then that limits if someone comes out of the closet, all of the roles that they can play. They can now never play a straight character. Like now Elliot Page. Exactly. Elliot Page, who recently came out as a uh, trans man. Um, and then also, what about people who are who are gay but are not out yet like how do they go about do they what characters do they play and they portray like they can probably authentically play a gay person but they'll be uh kind of derided for it um and then trying to figure out where we draw that line yeah that's the conversation i want to have real quick not necessarily real quick, but that's the conversation I want to have. That's a lot of stuff I just talked about from this article. What are your thoughts after hearing all of that? Well, I think that um, specifically, I think oh, I have a lot of thoughts. And again, I'm not one foot solid in, in one or the other camp on this. Um, because I think that much like gender and sexuality, this is more, this is a little bit fluid, <laughs> this uh, situation. Um, I think representation does matter, a hundred percent. I mean, like in the time of Shakespeare, like it, for Shakespeare plays, women couldn't act, and so it, you know, like it, men played female, played all the roles, and so you know, in that time, representation for women in general is, you know, was super important, and now we have that, and uh, so I mean, like, but we're even still working towards that. One of the biggest things about yeah, Wonder Woman I mean, coming out a few years ago is like, oh my god, I never thought that women could be superheroes or be seen on the big screen in that way. Yeah, so we like, are we're still, still working making, towards that. Yeah, we're still working towards it. And there's this whole thing called the. Are you familiar with the Bechdel test? Yes. So for those of you who aren't familiar, it's uh, for a movie to pass the Bechdel test, it has to have two women that aren't just, you know, throwaway characters, and they have to talk to each other, and it can't be about a man. And most movies do not pass this test. Uh, and so, like, that that matters for women in general, you know, having that representation. And so I'm just, the only reason I'm bringing that up is to sort of like, because I identify as a straight cis woman. So I bring that up to sort of, I can only kind of put my shoes, my feet in, in these other people's shoes. But, you know, it's, it's sort of a, not quite parallel, but you know what I mean? Like, kind of like, I can understand why a person would want would not want a straight cis person to play a gay lesbian transgender queer you know i i completely understand that and i think because they aren't represented very frequently or very well at least yet in media i think it is important for uh, specifically for specifically I want to speak about trans people right now um because I think that's more of an I think that is more um they are less represented trans people are less represented and I mean you have we have had a few situations where trans people are are playing these roles for example um what's her name Laverne Cox playing the trans woman on Orange is the New Black. There's the whole TV show, Pose, which is all about, like, the um, ball scene in um, in New York. So do you, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with what a ball is, but it was for predominantly people of color, predominantly black people of color, I believe is how that was. Um, but they were gay, lesbian, trans, and it was a space for them to go and be in their community and they would have uh, the ball itself was you know they had categories that you would walk in it, it it's it's like i don't know if drag is sort of a shoot off of it or completely separate from it there but there are some similarities where they'll have like you know curves so people with curves would walk and you know and do like mm, mm, yes and pose hence the title of the show and then they get ranked and you've got like different houses you know like you've got your your mother or your father, and then you've got all your siblings in this house, but they're not actual siblings, like it's a maid family. Gotcha. Um, 
So Pose Pose is a great show and has l- a lot of trans actors in that show, which is phenomenal. It, it's been huge uh, from what I, I've listened to some podcasts where people talk where that's been talked about, um, and it's a, it's been big. And I think it's it, it's really important because we see more and more, still not enough, but more and more gay and lesbian couplings and identity in media but we see significantly less trans related media so i think that's it's important that they have that everybody has the representation but speaking specifically of them it's really important that they have that because trans people are still really really persecuted against and uh, killed not that gay people aren't I, and i but I feel like just saying that people are, might think, well, but so are we. And I, yes, I'm just speaking specifically of trans people and the the difficult, difficult lives that that they lead right now. Um, and so there's still a lot of work to be done there. Um, none of this is to say that I think straight people should play gay and lesbian people or otherwise identified, identifying, you know, non gendered or um, not or um, uh, bi, fluid, all of that. Um, I think, so, <laughs> that, this is all to the side of me that says, yes, I think um, gay, lesbian, and trans people should play gay, lesbian, and trans people. Like, not straight people. I mean, like, straight people should not play those roles. But also, um, I think, specifically with gay and lesbian and like sexual identity in that regard and like where you fall on that scale it's there are a couple of issues because just because and you sort of hit on this just because someone isn't out as anything other than straight doesn't mean they're not anything other than straight so we don't know if james corden is a hundred percent straight I mean, I think we think he is. He's married to a woman, but which is which isn't to defend. I'm not defending him, um, but well, I, I even think, think about people like like Ian McKellen, who had an incredibly long established acting career before he finally decided to come out at a very old age. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And like um, Elliot Page, we knew Ellen had come out as lesbian. But didn't know, you know, like we, you know, you don't know if if somebody is or isn't trans because you're not that person. You can't know everything. Um, so there's that because I think making it a strict black and white rule um, would alienate people that don't need to be alienated. You know what I mean? Like it would just make more difficult on people who are in, are still closeted. I right. think. Um, and that's that's one of the things that was actually brought up in the article as well. Is that like, not only is it hard to come out because of society nowadays uh, as yeah. gay, lesbian, trans, whatever it is that you're coming out as, um, but in Hollywood specifically, there's a trend of people who come out of the closet and then for the rest of their career see a lot less opportunity coming their way because they are out. Yeah. And they said it's a very heterosexual dominated industry. Um, so there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, I came out and now I'm no longer a working actor because of it. Yeah, which is awful. And I mean, I think, uh, just going sort of to what Kristen Stewart said, I, I don't think, I, I personally have no problem <laughs> with trans people. Like, because uh, if a, tra- a, a person who is trans, that's not all they are, you know, right? A person who's gay, much like one of the other people you mentioned says, like, that's not all they are. Um, and so a person who is trans female shouldn't have to play trans roles all their life because they are a female, you know? Right. So they should be able to play female roles. Same thing for trans males. Trans is just part of it, a, 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 part, a piece of who they are, not all of who they are. And that, it's the same thing for, for people who are gay and lesbian and... LGBTQIA plus all of the all you know you know um, it's not all they are so they should be able if there's a role that they identify with and it's a just so happens to be a straight character I think yeah I don't care play a straight role it's acting like 
I, I just there are so many different things. This and this is why I can't say a hundred percent yes or a hundred percent no, because right. it is acting. It's mm-hmm. not reenactments. Uh, it's not. You know what I mean? It's it's playing pretend. Right. And so there's that aspect of it, but I mean. <sighs> That's one of the things that I think uh, when I think about my struggle with with this argument is is the the fact that it's acting. Uh, Pablo, what's up, Pablo? In the chat says, yeah, it shouldn't be a strict black and white rule, and I think that's that's important. Pablo, yeah, yeah, thank you, Pablo. I think that's important because when you think about the craft of acting, this is part of of yeah. where my mind's trying to rectify everything, and and I have this cognitive dissonance where I. I I can't fit it into a category that I want to fit it into because I believe two things that are in opposition. And one of them is that acting is about uh, empathy. It's about putting yourself in the role of someone else who you yeah. do not identify as and becoming that person. So when we think about like uh, Tom Hardy playing gay twins in that, whatever, I forget the name of the movie, like, he does research, he shadows people, he explores, he does interviews to figure out what that's like and then try to become that character. And that, that at the heart of it, whether it is about sexual identity for that character or whether that is someone who's like, I'm playing, I, I'm a, an actor who grew up in Hollywood, but I'm playing someone who works on an assembly line. Like, I don't know what it's like to struggle as a blue collar worker. I don't know what it's like to live yeah. paycheck to paycheck, but I'm still going to figure out what that experience is so I can authentically portray that in the movie. And so I'm struggling with saying, like, how do we say it's okay to to study, learn about, and portray other life experiences like jobs, circumstances, environment? Am I a rich person who's trying to who's trying to portray what it's like to grow up on the streets of Harlem? And then also say it's not okay to portray other life experiences like growing up as a, a gay or trans person. Uh, like, yeah. how, that's where I'm like, I don't know where we draw that line because I do believe that people should be able to explore and act some life experiences, but I guess that there I should think be a so line, too. I guess, maybe around identity. But then, but even like people identify so much with their hometown, people identify so much with their profession, like that's a form of identity as well. And so that's where I don't really know or understand where we draw that line. And I, well, I don't know that there will ever be an exact consensus on where the line is. And I know that there's no way that we're going to, that everyone will be happy with whatever a decision would be made or like in a a film, let's say prom, let's just take prom because we're just speaking about that. You know, clearly a lot of people were upset with James Corden playing a gay character, but a lot of people weren't. Uh, as well. Um, And it's just like, I think that has to do, I don't know, I can't say why people were or weren't upset because that's not for for me to say. But I think also it depends on a person's own experiences with how they feel about it. Um, And I can't relate to the experiences of gay, lesbian, trans people, gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans people, because that's not, I'm not that. Um, I think, ultimately, I think the LGBTQIA plus community needs more representation. So on the whole, more of these roles, currently at least, for the foreseeable future, uh, like let's just say you take all the roles that are LGBTQIA plus roles and you line them up. <laughs> I think a larger percentage of these roles need to go to people within that community. For, at least for the foreseeable future so that they ha- so that they have more representation until it becomes more normalized within gr- the greater like society and culture as a whole um because it is important for representation especially for young people growing up struggling with these things um that they it's really important to have somebody to look up to um it's, that's just so important. So I think there is a problem with how, how um, frequently and how well this community is portrayed. Um, 
so I, so essentially, I guess my answer is I think more roles should go to the people within that community, but I don't think all roles have to be portrayed by people within that community. I think what you just said might summarize my feelings on it a little bit. You said how authentically they're portrayed, how often and authentically they're yeah. portrayed. And I think about um, – well, even, well, Pablo here even mentions in the chat too. He said, uh, "Growing up, being gay in the late '90s, movies like In and Out, Object of My Affection, uh, Tu Wong Fu, The Birdcage were all important. Just the fact that they were gay characters on the screen is important. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about the sexuality of the actors, as long as they're portrayed in a way that accurately reflects right. the culture and and what they're going through. I think that's what's most important as well. And part of what I think, again, I haven't seen the whole movie of Prom yet." Um, but some of the, the things around it, tweets people were angry about, what I think that people were upset about was that James Corden was basically a caricature of a, a gay Broadway actor. And so yeah. it, it wasn't necessary an, an authentic um, portrayal of what being gay on Broadway was. And that's where things got problematic. And I think we can solve that a couple of different ways. We can solve that by putting a gay person in there. That's one way we can do that so that they can represent it well. But we can also make sure that there are gay people in the writer's room, that there are gay people uh, in the production role, in producer roles that are that can say, oh, you know what? I don't like the way that that's turning out or that's not really portrayed very well. Let me talk to the director and let's change something up. Or gay people in director's chairs so that they can better tell stories as well. And that's something where we're starting to see a change not just in that way, but also like, we're struggling to get women writers in there. We're struggling to get people of color in there. And so I think one solution to the problem that we're seeing is making sure gay or trans actors portray gay or trans people, but also that they are represented in all other facets of the production as well. That's another solution to make sure that just what we're seeing is accurate rather than, again, linking back to Jim Crow and the minstrel shows like one group of people what they want you to believe about however accurate or inaccurate that is about a group of people. Well, and just to kind of, just to piggyback off of that really quick, one more thing. So yes, having these people, ha having these roles, having these people in these writing, in the writing room, in the, on the production company and within, uh, within Hollywood, but also just out in the world, having these people in your, w as colleagues. Like yeah. it's, I, I know some, so I know, I have some trans and non-gendered or non-binary friends um, that, that, you know, we occasionally would, would have conversations about that. And I, I listen to a lot of like feminist podcasts that are like uh, intersectional feminists. So there are a lot of trans people uh, involved uh, and spoken to, involved with these podcasts and interviewed for these podcasts. And I was listening to one, it was an episode of, uh, I believe it was an episode of Jamila Jamil's podcast, I Weigh. And there was, uh, yeah, it, it, that's exactly what it was. Because she was talking to, her name's Kachinga. Kachinga, what's her last name? I want to tell you all. Kachinga. Oh, man, she's great. What's her, na what's her last name? So I, you guys can look her up if you want to. Um, she's trans female. And I'm going to have, it's not wanting to come up for me. That's annoying. We can link to it in the notes. Maybe she just goes by Kachanga. I think she's just a one name person, but I'll find it. Yeah. And we'll put it and I'll send it to you to put it in the notes. But she was talking about how difficult it is for a trans person to get hired. Uh, because sp speaking, she was speaking specifically of herself. Uh, a, she made a joke that her name's Kachanga. Um, which is also a problem because a lot of, I don't know, I don't know the origins of the name Kachanga, but a lot of people of color have like historical people of color names, you know? Right. And something in, that in, the white people in corporations see that name and they're like, that's not something I grew up hearing. Therefore you must be different. Exactly. And so yeah. it's already more difficult for, for just for that reason, for speaking specifically for people of color to get hired. But when a, when a transgender person applies for a job, they're like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm female, 
but my birth certificate says I'm male. So they're like, okay, so do I put my male name or do I put my birth name or do I put my name? Do I put my, my gender or do I put my birth certificate's gender? And then no matter what you do, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll find out. Uh, so it, let's say you put your birth name, and you sh- which is a, man, a male name, and you show up female. And, and then now you have to, now the interview doesn't, doesn't, it's not just about you and your ability, like your ability to do the job. It's about you as far as like your transness, which it shouldn't be. So I think we need more representation for, for the, this community of people just in general in the world because we're not seeing it. It's getting better at least for the, at least for the gay and lesbian and bisexual community. Uh, I believe it's, it's, it's getting a little bit better or at least, I don't, I don't really know what the Trump administration has done, but up until then. That's a whole uh, other ball as of far wax. As, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, as far as up until then, I believe it was getting better for that, for that community. Um, but, but it's been, it's still a really hard uphill climb for them in general. And it's been more difficult for the trans community because that is less, I think, bigoted people and people who don't, in quotes, understand um, that community. I think it's easier for them to say, Oh, this person, this this guy likes another guy. <sighs> you know, do their their whole bigoted thing about it, but be like, okay, well, they're both guys at least, you know. And then for trans people, it's I think it's not excusable, but it's people are less willing to accept that you have a penis, but you're a woman. Um, so I just think representation is what matters most for people in general. And we just need more of it. Uh, and until then, I think m- m- the majority of the role should go to the people in that community. But I don't think that means that straight people can't play them. Authentically. This is a, a conversation that I would love to continue having. And, and I'm uh, still going to have to think about it, you know? Yeah. I don't, who knows what other thoughts and I, you know, I'll come up with. Yeah. I'm glad we've got Pablo in the comments. Thank you, Pablo. Um, the, kind of uh, the irony in. is That's not really lost good. on me that we are two white cisgender white. people <laughs> who identify as straight yeah. talking about the struggles of all of these other people who aren't us. Um, so I would actually, I would love to hear if other people's perspectives. So hearing Pablo's there as well, reach out to us on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash affable idiots. Uh, I would love to hear more. And in fact, if you hear this and you're like, I have experiences I would like to talk about and get out there. I we please, would love to have yes. you as a guest on the show. So well, please reach out, and, and I would love how, to further this with with uh, someone else as well. And this is how I usually make up my mind about how my opinions on things. Because like I'm not gay, lesbian, transgender, so I can only think so far, you know. Right. And then, you know, like so I like to hear the. When when talking about something like this, where you're not completely like, yeah, a hundred percent, this is what I feel, this is what I think. Um, I, even then, you know what? Even then, I still just like to have conversations about it because I could be wrong. I'll tell you, I used to be a registered Republican. Ooh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but oh, back then it also meant something different. So. Yeah. Well, also, I was a closeted Democrat my whole life. <laughs> but, that's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> but. Um, you know, like, I, don't, I think that my, your mind can always be changing and you can always be growing. And I think the only way to do that is to have conversations who are with people who are affected by whatever it is you're talking about. And so I would love to hear the thoughts and opinions uh, and, and stories and anything from anybody, um, especially if you're if you are within the LGBT plus LG, my gosh, LGBTQIA plus, t- sorry, tongue tied community. Uh, I'd just like to hear about your experiences and what your thoughts are on this because, you know, right now I'm saying what I've said, where like I think most roles should go here, and but it's not that doesn't necessarily out rule or like say cis people can't do it. But who knows? Maybe we'll get some people who have had experiences and my opinion could change. I don't know. Um, I would just. If I'm wrong, I want to know, you know, I want, I want to be right. So I want to, I would love to hear more from anyone, from all of you, please. 
Wonderful. Oh. Well, that's it. That's that's the discussion I wanted to have today for our honest discussion. It was a really Jesse, good. I think that wraps discussion. up our show. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that. That was wonderful. I like being really goofy and silly on this show and being dumb, but also I like to have serious conversations sometimes. I like to learn. I love it. I like to learn, especially with something like this, where it's like neither of us are like 100%. Absolutely. Right. You know, like none of us, you know, so I like that a lot. Um, thank you for bringing that. And thank you again, You're Pablo. Welcome. Let's see here. So you can find us, as Mike said, on Twitter at twitter.com. I think it's a dot com slash it Apple. Is. It is a dot com. It's, it's not edu. We've got, <laughs> not, it's not edu. It's not an org or a gov. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Affable Idiots, Responding Fire, and also with you. Responding Fire for all your video game content is also <laughs> on Twitter, right? You have your own Twitter yep. for Responding yeah. Fire. Twitter.com so slash Responding find Fire. Us, holler at us. Um, please let us know, you know if you're comfortable and, and would like to. Uh, your experiences, your stories, your thoughts and opinions as well on this. Uh, I would really like to know. Um, and lastly, so to follow up the, you know, the end, the caboose of this podcast, we have a quote. <laughs> <In> the caboose. <laughs> <laughs> we have a quote from the late, great Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Our parting positive thought today is, so often in life, things that you regard as an impediment turn out to be a great good fortune, which is so true and so good. And I miss her. <laughs> I miss yeah. her a lot. And this is a, an image, uh, I think it's a card that you can buy on Etsy. Somebody drew a good picture of her um, and her descent collar. She's great. <laughs> uh, so thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being our lifelong friends. We'll see you next week. And as always, hugs and kisses. Hearts and charts. Shardy farts. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-ta.